Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله My dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madhumi channel Welcome back to our Sitsala, the Tears of the Graveyard Inshallah, before we get started, let's hear a blessing of reciting Duda Park upon the best of creation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, in our lifetime, we, at times, we normally forget something. You know, when we speak to someone, we forgot where we were, or we put something down, and we forget at times where we put it. Let me give you a solution to this today. And my dear respected Islamic brothers, it's mentioned by Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that he mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, whenever you forget something, then send Rude Park upon me, it will come to your mind, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. So what do we learn from here? That if you've forgotten something, send Rude Park upon the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the virtue, by the blessing of that Rude Park, insha'Allah, you will remember, insha'Allah Azza wa Jal. So my, my dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madini Channel, continue to recite Rude Park, peace and blessings upon the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madini Channel, in our silsila so far, we've been hearing about how one shroud thief, he opened five graves in total, and we've heard about four in total so far. And in the four that he opened, he's seen the azab was happening in those graves. Uh, the first grave that he opened, he's seen that an adulterer and a person who used to drink alcohol was being punished. The second grave that he's seen a Zabin, it was due to the person whose earning was haram. The third person's grave that he opened, he saw that the person was being punished. Why? Because of backbiting, because of lying, and because of slandering. The fourth grave he opened, he saw that the person was being punished because he was lazy in offering his salah and fasting in the month of Ramadan. But today's silsila, today's episode is a bit unique. Why? Because the final grave this person opened, it was a beautiful seed. Hence he's mentioned, the person, the Shah thief, he says, when I opened the fifth grave, it was completely different from the other graves. This grave was extremely spacious inside, and there was a throne with a handsome young man sitting on it. An unseen voice revealed that this person had sought repentance while he was young and he was steadfast in fulfilling his salah and fasting in the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah, my dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madani channel, you have just heard, mashallah, that this final grave, this shroud thief opened. The person inside the grave, he was in a good state. Why? Because this young man was sitting on a throne. And my dear respected Islamic brothers, is mentioned that this young man, his grave, it was extremely spacious. And this was due to this young man repenting while he was young and fulfilling his salah and fast. Let me tell you some blessings of worshipping Allah in young age. The Prophet has said, Allah loves such a person who has devoted his youth to obeying Allah Almighty. From among the creation, Allah likes the most handsome faced young man who spends his youth and beauty in worshipping Allah. Allah gets proud of him. And in the presence of the angels, Allah says, He is my real bondsman. In a hadith Qudsi, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, The young man who believes in the predestination decided by me, remains content with what I've recorded for him, contents himself with the sustenance I've granted, and suppresses his desires of his nafs for my pleasure, is like some of my angels in my court. Indeed, if man becomes obedient, bondsman of Allah, and a true devotee of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he becomes like angels, or even greater than them. SubhanAllah. What have you just heard? We have just heard that a young man, a young person, who has devoted his youth in the worship of Allah azawajal, Allah azawajal mentions that person amongst his angels. SubhanAllah. This is the rank, this is the status that a young person obtains, my dear respect to Islam. Before we continue, our Rasuls, are greater than the Rasuls of the angels. And the Rasuls of the angels 
are greater than our awliya. And our awliya are greater than those angels who are not Rasul. But the sinners and the evildoers can never be greater than the angels. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Speaking about the worshipping Allah Azawajal in your youth, in your young age, it's mentioned that Sayyidina Allama ibn Rajab humbly alayhi rahma stated, one who remembers Allah in his youth will be helped by Allah in his old age and weakness. Besides being blessed with good hearing, good vision, strength and intellect. And my dear respected Islamic brothers, a beautiful incident about Sayyidina Abu Tayyab Tabari rahmatullah alayhi. He reached the age of 100 years. Now think to yourself, there's a person living amongst us. He's 100 years old. How do you think he's living his life? Many times, he hasn't got the strength anymore. He's not physically there, he's not mentally there. Well, my dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madini channel, it's mentioned that Sayyidina Abu Tayyab Dabari rahmatullah alayhi, he reached the age of 100 years, but he was mentally and physically fit and healthy. Someone asked him that, what is the secret of your health? He replied, I protected my physical abilities from sins in my youth, so Allah Azawajal has retained them for me in my old age. And on the other hand, Sayyidina Junaid rahmatullah alayhi saw an old man begging. He said, this person wasted the rights of Allah in his youth, so the strength, his strength has been wasted in his old age. So my dear respected Islamic brothers, worshipping Allah in young age, Alhamdulillah, this is great blessing. And that person, that fortunate person who worships Allah in his youth age, Alhamdulillah, he sees blessings in this world, and inshallah he will see blessings in the hereafter. My dear Islamic brothers, the grave that we've spoke about, that person who was in the grave, another quality about him was mentioned that this person was steadfast in fulfilling his salah and fast. You know today, what do youngsters say? Brother, I'm 20 years old today, I'm 25 years old, I'm 30 years old. Brother, let me get to 50, let me get to 60, let me get to 70 years old. That's when I'll start praying my namaz. That's when I'll start offering my salah. That's when I'll start worshipping Allah. But my dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madhya Khanna, what is our guarantee? My request to you, those youngsters that say this, my request to you, go to the graveyard. Go and visit that graveyard one day. I guarantee you, you will find someone who passed away younger than you. You know today people say, brother let me get old and that's when I start worshipping Allah. Go and visit that graveyard. I guarantee you, you will find someone buried in that graveyard who passed away younger than you. So my dear respected disciple, but this, this is a satanic whisper. And some youngsters say, brother, I'm earning at the moment. Brother, let me earn a good livelihood. Let me buy a house. Let me look after for my family. That's when I'll start praying in the court of Allah. That's when I'll start reading my namaz. That's when I'll start offering my salah. My dear respected Islamic brothers, it's mentioned that the salah, due to the blessings of salah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Azawajal, He bestows blessings in your sustenance. So those people that say this, brother, let me get old and that's when I'll start worshipping Allah. Because let me earn a good livelihood. That's when I'll start worshipping Allah. You start worshipping Allah now. You start reading your namaz now. You start offering your salah now. Inshallah Azawajal, Allah Azawajal, He will bestow blessings in your wealth, Inshallah Azawajal. So my dear respected Islamic brothers, another quality that was mentioned in regards to this young man who had a, a spacious grave was, Alhamdulillah, he repented at a young age. And my dear respected Islamic brothers, there are many blessings, many blessings in repenting in the court of Allah Azawajal. Being, being a human, if we commit a sin, we should repent immediately. Then again, if we commit a sin, we should repent again immediately. No matter how many times we commit sins, we should repent each and every time immediately. And we should never feel disappointed. Allah Azawajal has mentioned in the Holy Quran, Surah Maida, verse number 39, translation from the glorious Consul Iman. Those who so repent after injustice and amends, then Allah Azawajal will turn to him with mercy. Undoubtedly, Allah is the most forgiving and the most merciful. Regarding this blessed verse, it is mentioned in Tafsir Siratul Jinan, published by Maktabatul Madina, which is the official publishing department of Dawat Islami, that repentance is an extremely good thing. No matter how major the sin is, if one repents, then Allah Azawajal forgives his right and grants the repenter salvation from the punishments of the hereafter. This is the blessing of repenting in the court of Allah. And you know, today we meet people and they say, Brother, I've spent my life disobeying Allah. Brother, I don't read my namaz, I haven't read my namaz, I haven't fasted in the month of Ramadan. Brother, I've committed this sin, I've committed that sin. Brother, I've committed so many sins in my life. And ask, brother, will Allah ever forgive me? Let me mention to you now a beautiful incident 
in the time of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. It's mentioned that Bani Israel was a nation of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. A, ta a time came upon the nation where there was nothing to eat for a number of years and there was no rain. The people, they went to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and they, they requested Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam to supplicate, to make dua in the court of Allah for rain. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he then gathered the people in a huge ground to make collective dua in the court of Allah And my dear respected disciples, shall tell you how many people gathered in that ground. It's mentioned that approximately 70,000 people gathered in that huge ground with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. Now think to yourself, how many people? Think to yourself today, we are gathered with 700 people. It becomes congested. Imagine to yourself now 7,000 people. Imagine how congested it will be. But no, my dear son, with us, 70,000 people were present with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam to do dua in the court of Allah for rain. And it's mentioned that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and the people, they were pleading in the court of Allah for rain for a very long time. They were crying, they were pleading in the court of Allah. But still not even a single cloud appeared and the heat also increased. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he asked Allah Ya Allah the people, these 70,000 people, they are making dua in your court. They are supplicating to you for such a long period of time. But there still there is no rain. Allah replied, O Musa alayhi salam, amongst you there is one person who has disobeyed me for the last 40 years continuously. O Musa, amongst you there is one person who has disobeyed me for the last 40 years. O Musa alayhi salam, make an announcement that this person who has been disobeying Allah for the last 40 years continuously should leave this gathering because as long as he is present, there will be no rain. And my dear respected Islamic brothers, there are 70,000 people present. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam asked Allah that, Ya Allah, there are 70,000 people who are present. How will my voice reach the people? You know, today we go to a gathering. We go to a gathering, there's a big gathering. We go to that gathering. How is the voice portrayed to the people? It's because of the mic. But at that time, there was no mic. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he said, that, Ya Allah, Zawajal, how is my voice going to reach this big crowd of people? Allah Zawajal replied, that, Oh Musa, your job is to make the announcement. How it is portrayed to the people, this is our job. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he made this announcement amongst the people. The oh, that person who has been disobeying Allah for the last 40 years, leave this gathering as it is because of you that there is no rain. Now this person, he's sitting amongst the 70,000 people. He's thinking to himself, it's me. I've disobeyed Allah for the last 40 years continuously. Now this person looking right. This person's looking left, he's looking around. No one is leaving this gathering. And he thought to himself, this person is me. So my dear respected Islamic brothers, then he thought to himself that if the people, if I leave, the people will know because of me, it was not raining. The people will come to know that I have been disobeying Allah for the last 40 years. Now listen, listen to the following part of this narration, a, such a beautiful part, that this person, he then hid his face in his shower. He pleaded in the court of Allah Zawajal, that Ya Allah Zawajal, today I have been disobeying you. Oh Allah Zawajal, I repent in your court. Oh Allah Zawajal, I have been dis disobeying you for such a long period of time. And you have given me chances after chances after, chan after chances. Oh Allah Zawajal, I repent. Please save me from being disgraced in front of the people. Oh Allah Zawajal, please forgive me. Now my dear Islam, this person has only made dua. He's only made dua in his heart also. He has read no namaz. He has not done any such da. He has not been to any masjid. He has not been to any pious person. Whatever he's done, he's done it in his heart. And it's mentioned that as soon as he did this, as soon as he repented in his heart, Alhamdulillah, he has a wajal. It started raining and it started raining heavily. Allahu Akbar, my dear respect to the Islamic wajal, it started to rain. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he then asked that, Ya Allah, no one's left this gathering. No one. From this 70,000 people, no one's left this gathering. How come it has now started to rain? Allah replied, O oh Musa alayhi salam, because of whom it wasn't raining, now because it is raining because of that person. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam then asked Allah, that, Ya Allah, what is the reason for this? Allah replied, O oh Musa, that person who disobeyed me for the last 40 years continuously, he has now repented in my court. And he has asked me for forgiveness. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he then said to Allah, the Ya Allah Zawajal, who is this person? Who is this person? I want to meet this person. Listen to the beautiful response of Allah. Allah Zawajal replied, O Musa, 
when he was disobedient to me. I never exposed him then. Now he has become obedient to me. Why would I disgrace him now? SubhanAllah. What a beautiful narration, my dear respected son of Adam. How merciful is Allah Azawajal. Allah Azawajal, he loves to forgive. His mercy, he looks for excuses to forgive us. But my dear respected son of Adam, sadly today, we do not repent in the court of Allah. We do not ask Allah for forgiveness. Now think to yourself, and my dear son of Adam, and the viewers of Madhini channel, think to yourself, we're working for someone. Our boss, our manager tells us that you need to do your job like this. Now we don't act upon that. Then he'll give us another chance that you need to do this properly. We don't do it. Then he'll give us a final chance that you need to do this properly. We don't do it. What will happen next? We'll be fired. We will lose our job. Why? Because we have acted upon what our manager has told us. Now a teacher, a teacher is teaching a class. Within that class is one child. Disobedient. He's not letting the other children learn. He's disrespecting the teacher. The teacher will give one chance, second chance, third chance. Then the teacher will punish him. Why? Because this, he's disobedient, they will give him detention. And if he still doesn't listen, he will be permanently excluded from that school. A parent, my dear respected Islam brothers, they give the children chances after chances after chances. The child is disobedient. The child may have become a drug dealer, an alcoholic, selling drugs on their doorstep. What will the parents do now? Their parents they will explain that the child still doesn't listen. They will kick the child out. You're not listening to us. You're, become, you're selling drugs on our doorstep. You've become an alcoholic. Eventually, the parents will kick the ch children out. And my dear respected son of Allah, let me tell you about the mercy of Allah. How many times we say sorry in the court of Allah? How many times we promise Allah that, Ya Allah, we will become pious, but we still don't become pious. We don't become good. But my dear respected son of Allah, Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal, my dear son of Allah, he gives us chances after chances after chances. So my dear son of Allah and the views of Madhini channel, we learn that you can only say sorry in this world a number of times before you are punished. And my dear respected Islam brothers, look at the mercy of Allah Azawajal. That if we repent in the court of Allah, if we ask Allah Azawajal for forgiveness, Allah will forgive us, my dear Islam brothers. And think to yourself, these eyes, they have been given to us. Why? To look at halal, to look at good things. We use these eyes to look at haram. But Allah Azawajal, He is so merciful to us that He doesn't take our eyes away from us. These ears, they have been given to us. Why? To listen to good, to listen to the Quran, to listen to lawful things. We use these ears to listen to unlawful things, to listen to haram things. But look how merciful our Lord is. That we still disobey Him with these ears and, and, and these eyes. But He doesn't take our eyes away from us. He doesn't take our ears away from us. He doesn't take the ability to hear away from us. These hands, my dear Islam, with, us, with these hands, we are supposed to use these to pick up lawful things, to touch the Holy Quran, to touch lawful things. Our hands, they touch haram. With these hands, we go onto the wrong websites. Oh, my dear respected Islam brothers, Allah is so merciful that He does not take our hands away from us. These feet, they go towards haram. They go towards the wrong places. They, they, these feet, we use them to disobey Allah. But Allah is so merciful to us. He doesn't take our feet away from us. Allah is the most merciful. Oh, my dear respected Islam brothers, we have stopped repenting today. We have stopped asking Allah for forgiveness. Let me mention to you a beautiful narration that once Sayyidina Ibn Abbas has narrated that Sayyidina Mu'az bin Jabal asked the Ya Rasulullah what is true repentance? The Prophet said it means that a person feels ashamed of the sin that he has committed. He then seeks forgiveness from Allah and then he never returns to this sin such as milk never returns to his udas. Sayyidina Ibn Masood said by making True repentance, all your sins are forgiven. And my dear respected Islam brothers, Amir Ahl Sunnat, Mawnala Ilyas Qadri, Ramat Barakatum Aliyah, has mentioned in his book, The Cure to Sins. The Hazrat Alama Sayyid Muhammad Naimuddin Rahmatullah has mentioned that there are three pillars of repentance. The first pillar of repentance is admitting your sin. Admitting your sin in the court of Allah, that Ya Allah, yes. I have missed my salah, I never fasted in the month of Ramadan, I have disrespected my parents, I have drunk alcohol, I've smoked drugs. So the first pillar of repentance is admitting your sin in the court of Allah. The second pillar of repentance is feeling ashamed, feeling remorse in your heart for the sin that you have committed. And the final pillar of repentance is pure intention to abandon your sin. So what? Number one, admitting your sin. Number two, feeling remorse, feeling ashamed. And the final one is to have a pure intention to promise Allah never to commit that crime again. 
you act upon these three pillars of repentance, Allah he will forgive all your sins. My dear respected Islam brothers, let me compare this example, these three pillars to a worldly example. Today you go to a police station. You go to a police station, police officer standing in front of you. You admit your crime in front of the police officer. You tell him what is he going to do next? Because if you admitted your crime, he's going to arrest you. He's going to proceed with the legal in regards to what to do next. Then, my dear Islam, brothers, you're in front of the police officer, you're in front of the judge. You can show as much remorse as you want. You can cry in front of him as much as you want. Because you've done the crime, you'll have to do the time. Then, my dear Islam, brothers, you can promise the judge that I will never perform this crime again. I promise you I will never go towards this crime again. I will never commit this crime in my life again. But what will happen? Like I mentioned, because you've done the crime, now you'll have to do the time. And you'll be sentenced because you've done the crime. My dear respected Islam, brothers, this is this world that you admit your crime, you feel remorse, you promise the judge never to do that crime again. There's no remorse, there's no mercy that that judge will show you. But look at the mercy of Allah, look at the court of Allah. You admit your crime, you feel remorse, you feel ashamed of your sin, and you promise Allah never to perform that sin again. The blessings of that is that Allah He will forgive all your sins. Look at the difference of this world and the hereafter. And then, my dear Islam brothers, a person. He's released from jail. He's released from prison. Now what? He applies for a job. He applies for a course. He's asked, have you got a criminal record? He says, yes, I've done this crime in my life. Meaning that even though he's released from prison, he still got that criminal record. Well, my dear respected Islamic brothers and the viewers of Madinah channel, you repent in the court of Allah. You ask Allah for forgiveness. Inshallah, Azawajal, Allah Azawajal, He will forgive all your sins. He will not only forgive your sins, but he will change all your sins into good deeds. That's the mercy of Allah. That's the court of Allah. But sadly, my dear respected Islamic brothers, we have stopped asking Allah for forgiveness. We have stopped repenting in the court of Allah. Inshallah, let me mention a few Madani pool to stay firm on repentance. Today we've heard, my dear respected Islamic brothers, once it's mentioned as Iblis, Shaitan, he said in the court of Allah, the O Allah, I will continue to make your people commit sins as long as their souls are in the body. And look at the response of Allah. What did Allah say? Allah said to Shaitan, the O oh Shaitan, I will continue to forgive my people as long as they ask for forgiveness. SubhanAllah. This is the mercy of Allah. So my dear Islam is repent in the court of Allah. And you know to stay firm on repentance, one Madni pool is that you must do dua in the court of Allah. Ya Allah, I want to save myself from sins. Ya Allah, I don't want to disobey you. Ya Allah, save me from committing sins. Do dua in the court of Allah. Ask Allah to help you. And inshallah, Allah will help you. And the second point that I'll mention is to stay away from sins. If you want to repent and you want to stay firm on that repentance, then my dear respected Islamic brothers, you need to think about the friends that you have got. You need to think about the company that you're keeping. Why? Because for example, there's five friends. There's five friends. Four of them are Namazi, they go to the masjid to read Namaz. Now to, one day they've gone out, they've gone out somewhere. Now the time of Namaz has come. Four of these friends have gone to the masjid to pray their Salah. Now the other friend with, is with them, he doesn't pray his Namaz. What do you think? Because the other four have gone to the masjid, he will also go to the masjid. But my dear respect to Islam, there are five friends. There are five friends. One of them reads his Namaz, four of them don't read their Namaz. Now think to yourself, when the Namaz time comes, when this one is thinking to himself, my other friends are now going to the masjid to pray salah, why should I go? So my dear Salah, the company that you keep plays a big impact on the deeds that you perform. We must think about the company that we keep. We must think about the friend circle that we spend our time with. My dear respected Salah, and the viewers of Madani channel, if you have friends that call you towards the masjid, they call you to the weekly gatherings of Dawat Islami, they call you to read your namaz in the masjid, they call you towards righteousness. Then Madina, Madina. Madina, Madina. Then inshallah, you have a chance of staying firm under your repentance. But that person, his friends are drug dealers. His friends are drug addicts. His friends are alcoholics. His friends, they perform haram actions. My dear respected Islam brothers, sooner or later, he would also fall back into those sins. So my dear respected Islam brothers, if you want to stay firm on your repentance, then my dear respected Islam brothers, Make sure your company is good. And Alhamdulillah, in this day and age, Alhamdulillah, this beautiful organization of Dawat Islami that has changed the lives of millions and millions of people throughout the world, my dear Islam brothers. Those people that never used to offer their salah, Alhamdulillah, they are not only offering their salah, but many have developed so much 
they are leading the five daily salahs in the masjid. This is the organization, the many drug addicts, many drug dealers, many alcoholics, many people who used to disrespect their parents. Alhamdulillah, they got the company of the Ashikani Rasul, the lovers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the brothers and the Islamic sisters of Dawat Islami, and Alhamdulillah, they have repented in the court of Allah. Let me mention to you one parable, the one Islamic brother who lives in Hyderabad in Sindh, Pakistan. He says that I was a drug addict and I did not used to offer my salah. My family were very worried and concerned about me. Luckily, he says, I was blessed with the privilege of attending a three-day Sunnah-inspired Ishtama of Dawat Islami uh, in Madinat al in Multan. He says, during the Ishtama, I made the intention to perform a takaf in Fizani Medina. So he mentions that I had the privilege of doing 10 days a takaf in Fezani Medina. He says, because of that a takaf, because of that three-day Ishtama, Alhamdulillah, his life changed and he says, I repented sincerely of my sins. I grew a beard and I instantly started to wear the green turban. When I returned to Hyderabad after the Itikaf, my family members and my neighbors, they were surprised to see me with a beard, a green turban. He says, I stopped taking drugs. Now I make efforts to call other people to righteousness. SubhanAllah, this is one Madani Bahar, one beautiful parable that has taken place due to this environment of Dawat Islami. So my dear respected Islamic village and the viewers of Madani channel, you want to change your life, join this environment of Dawat Islami. You want to obey Allah, you want to obey the commandments of Allah then join this environment of Dawat Islami. You want to become a person who is a namazi who offers you salah, then join this environment of Dawat Islami. You want to become a person who pleases Allah, then join the company of the lovers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, we will see blessings in this world and hereafter. Alhamdulillah, today we have heard about repentance. Alhamdulillah, Shaykh Tariqat Amir Ahli Sunnah Damat Rakatum Aliyah, he has given us a beautiful gift of the Madani Inamat. And every day, one of these Madani Inamats are that today did you perform Salat al Tawbah? In other words, did you, do, did you perform repentance today? Did you repent of your sins in the court of Allah? So, my dear respected Islamic this is my humble request to you that every day repent in the court of Allah. Inshallah, we will see blessings in this world and hereafter. Sallu al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all.